Hell yeah, what's up guys? This is Chris Pike. My friends call me Banksy. I'm back in action and today we're talking about Jung's Labyrinth or Young's Labyrinth depending on how you want to pronounce that. Guys, a heads up, this is a new indie game based around the psychology of Carl Jung and this is a very interesting game. It's very unique, it has some good parts, it has some bad parts and we're going to talk about all of that in today's Hot or Not. Alright, now before we get into the hot or not section, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the game. It's described as a psychological exploration game that uses concepts from Jungian psychology and mythology. That's basically right off their website, and that is fairly accurate. That said, this game feels more like two different games. There's the psychological game, the side of things, and then there's the exploration adventure side. One part I found very, very enjoyable and very, very interesting and, uh, well, one part I didn't quite like so much. So let's just skip all that crap and get right into the hot. All right, guys, the things I liked about this game, first off, I really enjoyed the concept of the game. The concept's great. It's about Jungian psychology, like we talked earlier. And here's the thing. It revolves around archetypes, or I guess what you would say, the quintessential essence of a type of person. I guess that's one way to put it. Um, that's not exactly the Jungian way, but if you've read any or listened to any Jordan Peterson, so all you Peterson bros and ladies, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, this game incorporates archetypes and basically have to like meet them and find them. And then more interesting, which I found really, really hot in this case, is you basically interrogate them with Socratic dialogue. You ask a question, they respond, and you ask another question saying, well, what about this? Or have you considered that? Very, very interesting. I've never seen that in a video game as far as I can remember. So it's something I really found interesting. Definitely a pro on the hot side. Another thing I found really interesting, again, is the archetypes. We, we touched on that briefly, but I love the archetype idea. In particular, when you meet the archetypes, they actually say meaningful things. They actually delve into the psychology, into Jungian psychology. For example, there's one called the inner child. I'm not make, trying to make this weird, but it's going to be weird. And it's, you meet this little kid, and it's kind of like a, a version of you. And it asks you, do you like to play games? Is that all you want to do with your life? And then I realized that I'm 40 years old and I play video games for a living. And that really, really hurts. So maybe, okay, I'm going to put that in the knot. Okay, you know what? Ignore what I just said there. Cancel that. Guys, other things I liked about this game on the hot side, I really enjoyed the visuals. I found the visuals and the artwork quite well done. Uh, nice and creepy and gothic. I'm not talking about the maze. The maze I found to be quite generic, and we'll talk about that in the not side. But, you know, when you meet the characters and you involve them in dialogue, I enjoyed that. That said, I do think the characters and the uh, archetypes particularly should have some animations in their face. Who knows? Maybe that will be released in a future update. I don't know. But that's... I, I, the still art was good. So, all right, guys. Now let's get into the not. All right, guys, the number one most frustrating part of this game, and it's by quite a landslide for me, is the maze, or the labyrinth, as they call it in this game. Um, first off, it's tedious. You, you, you get lost all the time. It's You're basically doing the same thing over and over again until it burns into the back of your brain. Um, yeah, I just, I just didn't think it really fit the game. Like, the game has such interesting... Uh, dialogue. It has interesting characters. Just being running around in a maze just felt like unnecessary. I get it. There's the whole mythology of the maze and Theseus and all that stuff. And that was part of Jungian psychology. So I'm going to give it a heads up there. I'm going to give it a pass. But again, I did find it tedious. Also, the uh, obstacles that were in the game, like the, like the blocks of fire and the spiders, they just... They were just useless, in my opinion. I don't think they added anything to the game. In fact, it sort of detracted from the value. This would have been better as a pure adventure game, in my opinion. The second thing I did not like too much about this game was the cost. There are... It was like $18 Canadian. I think this is a little bit steep, uh, in my opinion. I mean, I have no problem ponying up some bucks for a video game, but this is a pretty indie title, and yeah, it just seemed like it was a little steep. But again, you know what? for some people that are hardcore into Jungian psychology and like these types of games could be totally worth it for you. Overall, my opinion is this is a good game, but it's really two games. One, a quite good game, the one that we talked about, and then the adventure and the exploration side of things, which I found not that enjoyable, guys. So again, take what I said with a grain of salt. Please let me know what you think about this game. Leave any comments, any suggestions you want to see, any games you want me to cover, upcoming games you want me to cover. Leave it in the comments, guys. This is Big C. I'm checking out. I'll be back soon with some more Hot or Not.